What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out Random Flow, a new add-on from Blender Guppy designed to help you quickly add like random meshes for like sci-fi art and other things like that inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download Random Flow from the Blender Market. I will link to this in the notes down below. But notice how right now this is considered to be a beta version, um, but it does have a lot of functions in here for quickly creating things like random extrusions, random panels, other things like that, which can be fantastic for things like these sci-fi models, um, other things like that. So just going from a simple shape to a more complex shape. Um, it's non-destructive in the sense that everything that's added is added on top of your mesh. So it's not added as a part of your mesh, meaning if you get something you don't like, you can just delete it out and start over. Um, so let's talk about how to bring this in. So this is a little different than the stuff we've talked about in the past. So for this one, this is gonna come in a seven zip file and you're gonna need to extract that into a folder. Within that folder, there's actually going to be a Python file. So it's a .py file. And so you wanna extract that folder and open it up and then you wanna copy the random flow Python file into your Blender add-ons folder. So um, for me, for example, notice how I've just copied it into my add-ons folder in Blender. Um, and then it's gonna show up in your list of add-ons. So if you go into your preferences, once you do that, uh, if you had Blender open when you did that, so you may wanna click the refresh button, but you just wanna look for random flow. If you don't see it once you copy the Python file in, just click that refresh button, check the box for random flow. Notice how you can come in here and set the keyboard shortcut. I think shift Q works fine. So let's go ahead and just leave it as is. And so what we wanna do is we wanna um, first off, just take a look at the way this works. Notice that it does come with uh, some fairly detailed documentation. He's also got some uh, videos on his website that uh, talk through how to use this. But basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna go through and it's just gonna do some random subdivision and push pulling and other things like that. So first things first, when you're inside of the tool like this, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to tab into edit mode in order to select the individual faces. So, so right now, for example, if I had nothing selected in here, then it's not actually gonna do anything. And so what you need to do to start is to tab into edit mode and select some faces and then tab back out of edit mode with those faces selected before you run the tool. So for example, we're in edit mode and let's say we wanted to add something to these faces. Well, what you would do is you would select the faces right here inside of edit mode, and then you're gonna be able to do something with them. So notice how I have these selected, I'll tab back into object mode, and then you select this and do a shift Q in order to run this. So if I was to do a random extrude on those, for example, you can see how, we'll jump over into this mode right here, whoops. You can see how now this is gonna do the random extrude on the faces that I had selected in here. So just make sure that you've selected those faces inside of edit mode before you do anything else. All right, so the first thing that I wanna look at is the random extrude function. What the random extrude function is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to select faces inside of edit mode. So something like this. Then we'll tab back out of edit mode and we'll do a shift Q and click on the button for random extrude. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to add loops in here in order to add random extrusions. So if I click on this, for example, notice how it adds some random panels to this face. And you can adjust the ratio to, num to adjust the number of panels that are created. But notice how it's basically coming in here and it's creating one level of panels. Well, if I do a shift click over here, that's gonna add a second level of panels. So notice how I have panels on top of each other. They're kind of in there randomly, like this. And so you can adjust the ratio at which those are created in here using this slider right here. That's gonna basically adjust the number of randomized faces. You can also adjust the seed, meaning that's gonna adjust where those are randomly placed. So you can use this in order to start adding detail to this. Another thing you can do is you can adjust the inset depth using the sliders down below. So I can use these sliders to adjust the height of the extrusions that are occurring on this face. So you can also randomize that a little bit using the seed function right here. And so the other thing you can adjust is the minimum depth. 
right? So if I adjust the depth up, this is gonna extrude these out more. If I adjust it down, it's gonna extrude them out less. Usually I keep this pretty narrow um, because the wider they look, the clunkier the whole thing looks. So you can also adjust the panel size in here. So notice how when I adjust the panel size, that's adjusting how big the panels in here that are created are. So, and as you do this, notice how it's kind of fitting them on the face, but it's also adjusting where those panels go. Well, then you can come back and you can adjust um, like your ratio up above and your seed as well, um, kind of in conjunction with that until you can kind of get to the, the effect that you're looking for. And so notice how you can also adjust the subdivide loop function down here. So that's gonna add subdivision cuts to your loops up above. Notice how if you do that though, your results are gonna get a lot um, smaller in here because it's subdividing it, right? So that makes sense. So it's gonna subdivide the loops even more and you're gonna start getting um, the, the littler pieces that are on here. So there's a little bit of just kind of playing around with this um, as you're creating things in order to try to get the result that you're going for, right? Like for example, I'd like a few more panels on here. So I would probably come in and just adjust my ratio and I would also adjust my seed until I can kind of get that result that I'm going for. So I would recommend coming in here and just kind of playing around with this a little bit just to see what you can get and what you can create. The other thing that you might consider doing is you might consider running this a couple different times in a couple different locations. So we're not gonna talk too much about these functions down here for right now, but what I might do is I might come in here and I might select some other faces instead. So something like this and run it again in order to get a different result. So. I might do a shift Q or I'll tab out of edit mode. I'll do a shift Q and I can just do a random extrude again. And notice how I can start adding detail to other portions of this, uh, of this block as well. All right, so in addition to having the ability to create these random extrusions, you can also create random panels. So if I was to select like these faces right here, tab back into object mode and then do a shift Q, instead of picking random extrude, we're gonna pick random panels. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to add randomized panels in here like this. And so you can adjust like your panel size in here. So that's gonna give you random panel cuts in here, as well as you can add additional subdivision. So if you wanna add some like um, individually random panels in here, you can do that with the subdivision option right here. So again, you kind of play around with this a little bit until you get the result that you want, but notice how what that's gonna do is that's gonna really allow you to add that detail really quickly. You can also adjust like the thickness of the uh, panel and the cut in between them. So the depth of the panel is gonna give you depth. The thickness is gonna give you, it's gonna adjust the thickness of the cut that's in here. There's some other things in here that you can do as well. So definitely play around with this, but this can give you some kind of interesting results. And then what you could do is you could select this, tab back in here, and then pick some random faces in here like this, and then tab back and do some random extrusion on this as well. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to really add a bunch of detail really quickly to your objects. And again, I highly recommend that you read through the documentation in here because it's just kind of involved the way that it creates all of this. So there's some smart ways in here with loops that you can create the right kind of detail. Um, but the fact that you can come in here and add all of this really quickly is a big plus. So in addition, there's also a function here for scattering random objects along a face. So let's say for example, that we were to select this panel right here and then do a shift Q. So there's a random scatter in here and you can either use this to add in cubes. So what we could do for example is, let's put this back to one because this is kind of where this starts. But right now what this is gonna do is this is gonna add a certain number of cubes based on a number of points. And you can adjust the size of the uh, scale on those objects down here. So I'm gonna bring this down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 like this but notice what you can do is you can adjust the size seed as well as the point seed and the number of points in order to add objects randomly along this face. And then you can also adjust the rotation, right? So for example, if I was to come in here and adjust these like this, notice how you can get some more randomization on this face as well. So you can use this to add cubes or you can also use that to add objects or collections. So let's say for example, that this was an object that I wanted to randomly place on my panels. If I can just do a shift cube, random scatter, then we're just gonna select a mesh. And in this case, I've named this one 
uh, shape for scatter. So then we can kind of come in here and adjust this. So we can set number of points, point C. Notice how these are coming in really small, so I need to bring the scale back to what it was before. Then they start showing up on here, but you can adjust the size seed as well as the minimum and maximum size on here. And really what these need is they these need to be rotated, right? So I'm gonna rotate these to 90 degrees, but notice how I'm able to use this in order to randomly place these on my object. In here so you can use this to really quickly add detail so you could also do this with a collection so if you had multiple objects that you wanted to scatter on this face you could put them in a collection and then do this as well so there's also a function for adding random tubes in here so again we're going to going to select our panel right here but you can just do a shift q you can do a random tubes and you can select this and add tubes to your object so and you can adjust things like the length of the tubes so notice how you do have to be a little bit careful because things can jump around a little bit in here but you can adjust these tubes as well as the offset so how far off of this they're gonna come as well as you can adjust the randomization seed and you can also use the curb the curve depth in order to set how thick those tubes are going to be. So you can use the curve depth and then notice how the bevel is basically going to come in here and it's going to make your tubes more squared or rounded. So a lot of different things you can do with this. So and then if you don't like the way that this is on here, you can just adjust your seed so that it places them somewhere else. So the seed is going to allow you to do this. There's also options in here for shortest or longest that you can mess with as well. But again, I mean, I think with a lot of these things, we're really just kind of playing around with this in order to see what we can create. And so then real quick, I just want to hit on this as well. So I'm going to tab back into edit mode, but there's a function in here where if we do a shift Q, there's a quad slice option. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to slice our object just like that. And so you can either use your view angle as the direction. So if I do a quad slice based on our view like this, and then you can adjust the rotation in here, or you could also set, select the option for tangent and you could select like edges, for example. So if I select tangent, that's gonna allow me to come in here and add detail to this object. So notice how if I do that, so if I select these faces now, I could come in here and just do a shift tab, or sorry, a shift Q, and we could add like random scatter on here, for example. So we could add some cubes, let's bring these down. And we could add or reduce the number in here as well as the size. So we could bring our size down like this, but notice how adding this detail is really easy, um, especially now that we have that new geometry. All right, so I will link to this add-on in the notes down below. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below what you might use this for. If you like it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.